Hi everyone, this is Dan and this is uh, Yoko Suno by Roger uh, Liup. <laughs> Actually don't know how to pronounce this, uh, but I'm guessing one of these consonants is silent. <laughs> and this is uh, On the Edge of Life, life uh, Yoko Suno number one, published by Cinebook. And uh, I have one complaint right away that I need to get out. This says number one. But if I go to the publishing information right here, it says original title Yoko Suno 7. Ooh, Cinebook, you suck so bad. So, yes, this actually isn't the first uh, Yoko Suno book. Uh, this is actually the seventh. Uh, thanks, Cinebook. Uh, freaking epic translation publishing fail. Uh, anyhow, this is a pretty well known uh, Bande dessinée uh, French comic book. Uh, and what I will say about this, this was, uh, I kind of ran this down I was just looking down, uh, popular titles and, uh, kind of interesting price right here. It's, uh, 11 Uh, this story is uh, essentially about this main character, uh, Yoko, who is apparently an electrical engineer, which is interesting because she rarely, at least in this book, she doesn't really use any of her electrical knowledge except for a couple times. Uh, but what I will say about this book is this is a great example of the uh, genre variety that the French have uh, that you don't really see in American comics anymore. I think the closest you could probably uh, relate this to American comics is like uh, older uh, Archie stuff, right? Like maybe like Archie Mysteries or something like that. Uh, maybe uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Something like that is probably the closest equivalent in the American market to what this would be. Uh, what I will say about this book is uh, because of this error, uh, the first couple of pages are kind of confusing. Uh, even though it sets the, the setting right, you're in Germany. Uh, you don't really know who these characters are other than from inference. And unfortunately, this book kind of assumes that you read the previous, you know, six uh, <laughs> comic albums uh, before you pop this guy open, uh, which is unfortunate. It kind of makes it confusing. Uh, this book kind of needed a gym shooter to come in and, uh, and tell you what's what, who's who, and whatnot. Uh, but essentially, this story is kind of like a uh, mystery story. Uh, Yoko is visiting her friend Ingrid. Uh, she's kind of... Uh, uh, down with an illness and she discovers a uh, a mysterious individual is uh, transfusing and taking uh, her friend's blood in the middle of the night. Uh, by the way, the one thing I really wanted to mention in this book is this. This book is like a prime example of, uh, of just the, the French quality. Uh, and, and what I mean is just look at look at all these panels right here. I'm not gonna go over the story uh, You can pick this book up. It's uh, it's pretty fun since it's a mystery book I don't necessarily want to spoil the the twist at the end uh, But it is a it is a pretty cool story for what it is. I wouldn't say it's uh, Crazy, but it's uh, got a little bit of a uh, sci-fi twist at the end that is pretty satisfying for the most part uh, but it, what I will want to say about this book is take a look at all of these panels right here. Look at, look at this. Just really good detail right here. Look at this. I think this is, uh, well, it's not, this is like one point perspective, but look at every single panel in here. Look at this. L look at every single panel right here. And what I'm trying to point out is every panel has backgrounds. <laughs> Everything is rendered properly. And this was uh, published back in the 70s. So uh, you, you know this guy didn't have computer technology to aid him to do this. He did this all from reference, all with just standard two point, three point, one point perspective. And uh, even though the, the facial art is a little bit, uh, I would say kind of kind of dry, There's, he doesn't have that many facial expressions compared to say other uh, European artists. Uh, it does get the point across for the most part. Uh, it does remind me of uh, Archie Digest from like the 90s. Look at, look at this VW <laughs> he's got going around here. Uh, but yeah, no, look at this. There is not a single panel where backgrounds are not rendered in some way or other. Even the tiny panels. Look at this. This is like, he had like no reason to render this background, but he did it anyway. <laughs> it it kind of shows you sort of the difference in the mentality between uh, French comic books and American comic books. I <laughs> like this right here. <laughs> One thing though is that the action the action here is kind of a little bit like you see how Yoko's kind of stiff right here. Uh, not very good gesture, I would say. 
uh, compared to American comic books. Uh, but that's not all French comic books, to say the least. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> I like some of this right here. I forget, like, what's it like? Look at this freaking... <laughs> he draws an entire... <laughs> Look at what he drew right here in one panel right here. I almost wonder what the standard paper size uh, for Bande Dessinée is. Because I feel like the French definitely draw on much larger paper uh, than uh, America and Japan. I know in, in America the standard paper size is 11 by 17, and they take an inch off the top and a half inch off the side. I'm, I'm about to show you in a couple minutes anyway what an American comic book size paper is. But I'm wondering if like the French they use like a big canvas so they can get all this detail right and the perspective right. This is just freaking cool. Like some of the ending, you know, scenes right here. Like look at look at the detail in the towns and everything. Just really, really freaking cool. Oh my god! Oh my god! Look at this. <laughs> but yeah, story wise, uh, it's okay. It's a it's kind of a genre that I'm not really super into, and it, and it uh, sort of mystery sort of thing. So I can't really comment too much on on how much I like it or dislike it. Uh, it was it was a pretty good read for the most part, but the art in this book is uh, is impressive in just the workmanship and the quality, is what I'll say. So yeah, if you've never uh, tried out a French comic book, uh, Bande Dessinée, uh, just go to uh, for those of us Americans. I think the uh, only choice you got is Cinebook, uh, which is unfortunate because a lot of people have been telling me in the comments that they censor a lot of stuff. But uh, this is probably your best shot if you're trying to get uh, English translations of French albums. Uh, but yeah, Yoko Tsuno, uh, very, very, very nice comic. Uh, can't uh, recommend it or the. Uh, or I should say, uh, I can definitely recommend uh, this book and many other books uh, available on Cinebook for those who are not familiar with the uh, French medium. Uh, anyhow, let's get to the art. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to kind of redo, uh, actually, let me show you right here. So this was kind of like the original uh, fight scene uh, done by, by Roger Loop. Is that how it's pronounced? There's going to be someone in there who's going to correct me, but you know, <laughs> I'll just take the L. Uh, but uh, <laughs> So this is the original fight scene right here. You can see uh, them jumping across and doing the other stuff. What I wanted to do was kind of imitate the, the whole rendering of backgrounds, right? So this is a uh, two-point perspective, uh, you know, kind of taking a, taking a shot right here, her approaching. Then I kind of did like a sort of uh, martial arts pose right here to give it a little more flair, right? in terms of like there's a window there's she's jumping over there she's shouting at him right and then this is where i kind of went weird <laughs> i don't know why i did this perspective uh but uh yeah this was i was trying to go from like a worm's eye view to show her freaking yanking uh, her back as she's trying to escape uh and it didn't work out quite as well as i thought it would be uh, it kind of looks cool and i guess if you just look at it at a glance it's not as weird as uh it appears to me uh, and then this one is just her throwing the, the spray back. I kind of wanted to do like, just keep, you know, like swapping the camera back and forth between, you know, the, the intruder and Yoko right here. Uh, and then at the end, you know, I wanted to kind of give like the hero defeated kind of look as, as, uh, as the, the, uh, the intruder escapes. And it, it was kind of like my sort of, uh, sort of way of interpreting that fight scene. I kind of wanted to have the camera go everywhere and and like show like different angles that you kind of wouldn't see like close-ups in out etc but I didn't want to take away sort of the the essence of what the comic was doing which was rendering the background the inside of the room and whatnot though I mean clearly uh, the original artist is way better than me uh, fundamentally right but uh, you know, it was, this was a lot of fun to draw a lot of uh, two point one point perspective here and there <laughs> anyhow uh, that's the review short and quick uh, Yoko Suno on the Edge of Life, number one. Actually, number seven. Thanks, Cinebook. <laughs> but if you if you like this review, please hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. If you got any comments about uh, Yoko Suno one slash seven or my art, uh, leave it down below, and I will see you next time.